what's up cruisers this is my review of royal caribbean's wonder of the seas seven night western caribbean cruise featuring coco k and labadee who should watch this review people new to cruising this was our second cruise families traveling with young children do you have any dietary restrictions like gluten-free or lactose intolerant we had one of those Come along for the ride as we discuss the current entertainment on the ship, specialty dining, the drink package, ports of call, and much, much more. First things first, day one, embarkation. This cruise was out of Port Canaveral, which meant we had to fly to Orlando. We arrived the day before our cruise and spent the night at Hyatt Place Orlando Airport. The hotel is nothing special, but it served its purpose. It had a free shuttle from the airport to the hotel and a free hot breakfast. Next stop was getting to the cruise terminal, which is 45 miles away. We thought about taking a shuttle to the port terminal, but decided against it for two reasons. The Uber was about $80, which was actually less than the cost of three cruise port terminal shuttle tickets. More important than the cost, we got to choose exactly when we wanted to leave the hotel. The entire embarkation process was flawless for us. It was organized with a military-like precision. Getting in the terminal, through security, checked in, and ultimately on the ship was a breeze. This time, with all the COVID testing long gone, it made for a much more streamlined process for getting us on board the ship at 10.30. Oh, let the vacation begin. As soon as we got on the ship, we wanted to make our specialty dining reservations. Last time we stuck to the main dining room, but this time we purchased the unlimited dining package. More on the dining package later. But with that package, you can't make any reservations until you're actually on the ship and you have to go to a restaurant to make them. Once at any restaurant, you can make reservations for all the other restaurants except Azumi Hibachi. For that, you have to go to Azumi and wait in line there. After our first disastrous embarkation process, we made it a priority to get on the ship as early as possible. But in retrospect, if you don't need to book entertainment or make dining reservations, it may not be that important. Without having access to your luggage or your room until about 2 p.m., it certainly made for a long day. And by the time Sail Away came around at 5 p.m., we were all so exhausted, we just stayed in our room. Speaking of which, it is now time for our room review. Last time we loved our ocean view balcony, and this time we didn't think about booking anything else. We wanted to be midship, near the pool deck but not directly under it, and close to the elevators. We didn't entirely pull that off this time due to things being booked up. We ended up in room 11196, which was port side, midship, not close to the elevators, but right here. Being that the ship is only one year old, everything was modern and new. Unlike on Oasis of the Seas, it actually had plugs and USB ports by the bedside, and it had a lot more usable, easily accessible storage. The bathroom was exactly what you would expect. Functional shower capsule with one multi-purpose soap dispenser and a tiny clothesline. The rest of the bathroom had a decent amount of countertop space and storage options. Which leads me to the big difference between this wonder room and the Oasis room we stayed in. Our balcony came with the world's smallest table. The living room didn't have a coffee table or ottoman either. We quickly realized this room was not designed for room service. One of our favorite moments from our first cruise was having a room service breakfast out on the balcony. There is no practical way for a family of two or three to eat on the balcony. Initially, I thought we had just gotten the short end of the stick and the normal table was taken off our balcony. But after some internet sleuthing, I realized all the inaugural Ocean View balcony reviews included nothing more than the world's smallest table. At first, I thought it was a safety thing. Then I noticed all of the interior balconies had normal sized tables. What's going on here? So I spoke with our room attendant and asked about getting a larger table. A day or so later, and after some greasing of the wheels, a moderate sized table showed up. Alas, we were able to have breakfast with mimosas out on our balcony. If you have any idea why Royal Caribbean decided to not have normal tables on the ocean view balconies, but normal tables on the interior balconies, please let me know in the comments below. And now it's time for the food and drink portion of this Wonder of the Seas review. This time we decided to try out the unlimited dining package. 
For us, it seemed like a great deal. It would be the last time our five-year-old would be able to enjoy it for free. Kids six to 12 need to pay, but it's a nicely discounted rate. We bought it on sale and before the prices for the unlimited dining package went up. All in, with gratuities and tax, it was less than $500 for the three of us. Good luck ever buying it at that price again. On our next cruise, the same deal costs over $680. And with a six-year-old, it would be nearly $780. When I purchased the unlimited dining package, I kind of thought of it as the deluxe beverage package, except for specialty restaurants. Everything free, all the time. After I purchased it, Royal Caribbean changed the rules for a la carte restaurants, and then I started reading the fine print. A one-time credit of $20 for a la carte restaurants, that doesn't seem like much, $15 surcharges, prefixed menus, cover charges. I was beginning to wonder if I had just purchased a glorified coupon discount package which is nothing at all like the drink package. Well, I can clear that up and I'm happy to say it's kind of sort of exactly like the drink package. Long story short, we ate at almost every restaurant and owed nothing every single time. The one exception for us would have been the Izumi Hibachi. When we made a reservation, it was very clear that there would be a $15 upcharge for each adult or person. Still not sure about that, which we were totally fine with but we never made it to that reservation due to a last minute conflict. The $20 limit at a la carte restaurants also scared me a bit because I wasn't sure which restaurants were a la carte and which ones were not. It wasn't clear, there's no list anywhere. Ultimately, on Wonder, it's just Playmakers. And the $20 limit is actually a $40 limit because there's two adults. And I have a feeling that if you went over that $40 limit, you probably wouldn't even face the surcharge. At one restaurant, we ordered champagne, which was not included in the ultimate beverage package because it was more than $15, but it never showed up on our bill. So the waiters definitely have some discretion on what you end up paying, which in our case, every single time was zero. We loved the unlimited dining package and trying all the different restaurants. The food was great from the lobster roll at Hooked to the ribs at Mason Jar. We almost never had anything that was bad. The only bad food that we did have was actually at Playmakers soggy fries, bad nachos, but we ate there twice and I love the wings. My wife and I both agreed that 150 Central Park was by far and away our favorite dining experience. Which leads me to some of the downsides of our unlimited dining package experience. The wait staff makes up a significant portion of your dining experience. While I love the food at Hooked, the service was awful. Our waiter was incredibly slow and it looked like he was only waiting on us. Another table in a different section came in 10 or 15 minutes after us, completed their meals, and left before we even received our food. Slow and inconsistent service happened at several of the specialty dining restaurants we went to. Some waiters were clearly overworked. At the Italian restaurant, Giovanni's, it looked like there was only one waiter for the entire restaurant. On several nights, we longed for the speed of the main dining room. Another downside of the unlimited dining package was the hassle of having to book all your reservations the instant you get on the ship. You can't pre-book them. Getting on a cruise ship should be a relaxing and joyous experience. And being in a rat race to get an Azumi Hibachi reservation exactly when you want it is anything but that. So our conclusion of the unlimited dining package? Immediately after the cruise, we both agreed we wouldn't be buying it again for our next cruise. Would we ever buy it again? Maybe. While it was a good value, the simplicity of not having to have any reservations and the efficiency of the main dining room was a more relaxing experience. I don't ever want to have two hour dinners. Gluten free and now lactose free. Prior to our first cruise, my wife was a bit worried if she would be able to have a normal dining experience due to her gluten allergy. And ultimately she was pleased with the options she experienced. The main dining room had gluten-free bread and pasta and desserts upon her request and working with the waiter beforehand. This time around, the gluten-free options only increased, but you still had to request them, and the buffet did not have a separate gluten-free section. With that said, she was looking forward to the gluten-free experience at Giovanni's, the Italian restaurant. Unfortunately, it didn't play out exactly as she had hoped. There was no gluten-free pizza, unlike Sorrento's, and while they claimed they could make any pasta dish, it really meant that they would just substitute something like, let's say, linguine with gluten-free penne pasta. Not being the biggest fan of penne pasta, she threw in the white towel and ordered the steak. Prior to this cruise, we had a curveball with my wife developing a lactose allergy. And Wonder of the Seas and Royal's ability to handle it was quite mixed. I'm pleased to say that there was always lactose-free milk available at every restaurant or coffee place. 
so that's a plus. But there was almost never any dairy-free butter like margarine, not the most difficult thing to come by. And there was no vegan spreads anywhere. To butter her gluten-free bread, she was offered marmalade one time, olive oil another time, but this clearly was a blind spot for Wonder of the Seas and Royal Caribbean. The Drink Package, also known as, but never referred to, as the Deluxe Beverage Package. Is it a good deal? Meaning, will it save you money? Maybe. On a seven night cruise, it's over $1,000 for two people. If you're looking to be frugal, steer clear of it. Both of you, because both adults are required to buy it, will need to drink five or six cocktails every day in order to save you money. But don't forget, those cocktails are expensive. They're 14 or $15. Reality is the drink package is more about enjoying your vacation than saving money. Don't drink at all, that will save you the most money. But is that your idea of a vacation? My idea of a vacation is not doing a lot of math. Wondering each day how many $14 drinks you've had and what will the total be at the end of the week? With a $300 bar tab, does that $200 massage still seem like a good idea? If you enjoy consuming alcohol on your vacation more than three or four drinks, then stop thinking about it and just buy it. But buy it on sale before the cruise. The best sale is usually a buy one, get one 50% off. And they typically happen around big holidays several times a year. Benefits of having the drink package are many. You can try new drinks you normally wouldn't try. For me, in Haiti at Labadee, I tried a Labadoozy. It was gross. I threw it in the trash after one sip. Way too sweet. I ordered something else with zero guilt. Never thinking twice about getting another specialty coffee in the afternoon or an extra bottle of water is exactly how a cruise should feel. Now that you have your drink package, it's time to party with your kids and wonder of the seas has you covered the kids entertainment options on this ship were really kicked up a notch by royal caribbean of course there's a splash away bay for your kids of all ages but this time they removed one of the flow riders and turned the back of the ship into a young kid's paradise with a new mini golf course and this massive two-story playground of sorts your kids will go wild because of its out of the way location on the ship, we missed out on this place for most of the cruise. So don't make the same mistake. If and when your kids tire of the wonder playscape, you can take them to Adventure Ocean, Royal Caribbean's kids club. Excellent free childcare. On sea days, there are three set times, morning, afternoon, and evening that you can bring your kids here. On port days, you can leave your kids here all day which actually sounds like a horrible idea for responsible parents. But when we were in Jamaica and we explained to our child that we were just getting off the ship and walking around for a couple of hours, then there was going to be no beach or pool. Our child actually opted and asked to stay at Ocean Adventure. Amazing. We also used Adventure Ocean after dinner, which is free until 10 p.m. to give us some casino time. Entertainment on this ship is plentiful, probably because there isn't a Broadway show unlike some Royal Caribbean ships. The main production show is something called Effectors 2, a royalty-free superhero show for kids. It's fun and we enjoyed it. There are special effects and a big drone to keep you entertained. The other big show on the ship is the Aqua Show. Intense, that's what it's called. A must-see for anyone. Our first attempt to watch the show was a washout due to rough seas. So don't assume your reservation is a lock. They did automatically reschedule our show to another day, which was nice, but unfortunately it was on the last day of the cruise during our Azumi Hibachi reservation. So we opted for the Aqua show, which we didn't regret. Unlike Aqua 80, where the star of the show is a foot stomping soundtrack, the star of the show Intense relies on water battles, dancing and diving. There is a second production show in the main theater called Tap Factory. Nothing amazing here, but it is enjoyable all the same. Besides the stomp-like stomping and garbage drum banging, the real stars of the show are a contortionist that will disturb some guests and a gymnast who thoroughly enjoys taking his shirt off. There is yet another show in the main theater, Voices. This one is enjoyable, albeit low budget, it's a jukebox singing show, a melody-driven walk through time. I felt like the show put too much of an emphasis on the video wall, which often featured stock video and out-of-sync pre-recorded singers. It was an odd choice when the live cast clearly had talented singers that could have been displayed. 
As if that was not enough entertainment, there is also an ice show called 365, which was great fun for the whole family. From its music, to some incredible visuals on the ice, to Game of Thrones skating and bro dancing, this was not your father's ice show. Which leads me to one complaint about nearly all the entertainment on the ship. It had a cringeworthy feel that some stuffy boardroom mandated that all the new entertainment had to be geared towards kids who are addicted to staring at their phones. Multiple times in different shows, you are force-fed lines about the socials and ringing up likes. Please, gag me with a spoon. This seven-night cruise itinerary caught our eye because it had two Royal Caribbean-owned destinations. And that means more value for your cruise. Fewer places that you'll have to actually pay for food and more mileage out of your drink package. First stop was NASA Bahamas. Our original plan was to stay on the ship since we got the gist of NASA on our last cruise. But we ended up buying an excursion for a pirate ship boat tour because we knew our kid would love it, and he did. It was affordable, about 60 bucks a person, probably half the cost of going on one of those party catamaran ships. And it gave us a whole new perspective of NASA that we hadn't seen before. Thoroughly enjoyable. Next stop was Coco Cay. I could waste a lot of time and say all the reasons why Coco Cay is great, but you probably already know that. We loved Coco Cay on our first cruise and we longed to go back. Good free food and drink, if you have the drink package, it really puts it over the top. It really has something for everyone, whether it's a party pool vibe or a chill island vibe. This time, however, we experienced the dark side of Coco Cay. Everything shuts down early while our itinerary said we could be there until 4 p.m. and the chill grill claims to be open until 3 p.m. When we went there for lunch at around 2.30, they were already cleaning and clearing everything out. Yes, there was still food, but the ample condiments, salsa stations, guac stations were whittled down to one sad picked over station. Not the greatest experience. After lunch, we went to Splashaway Bay, which we were kicked out of shortly after our arrival. Earlier in the day, we promised our son playtime at the pirate ship, but that didn't happen because it closed too at 3 p.m. The moral of this story is don't sleep in like we did. Get there early, eat lunch early, and leave early because after 2 p.m. it starts to feel like last call. Next up, day four, our first sea day where we were able to see plenty of early morning chair hogs. We never tried to find a lounger by the main pool midday, so I can't speak to that. But I will say, we never did have a problem finding a seat at the kids' splash area any time of day on any day of the cruise. That could not be said on Oasis of the Seas. And I suspect it has something to do with the new redesigned deck plans. Day five, Freeport, Jamaica. Unless you book an excursion, there is not much to see here. We walked around for a bit and left the walled garden of the cruise ship port only to quickly return. Ultimately, we got to see the sights of an empty solarium instead. Whoa, 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 whoa. Day six, our last port, Haiti. Yes, Haiti. While Haiti is suffering from multiple geopolitical problems, you can safely disembark and enjoy your stay guilt-free here, knowing that Royal Caribbean pumps hundreds of thousands of dollars each year into the local government, $12 a passenger. Labadee is the second Royal Caribbean private port on this cruise, while Coco Cay is a modern amusement park for kids of all ages. Labadee is certainly a much more rustic resort. With that said, I feel it gives a much more authentic Caribbean feel, with sprawling hills and multiple coves, but the food areas feel much more like a campsite, and their version of Splashaway Bay is a joke compared to Coco Cay, or even the ship for that matter. The food and drink options are not nearly as plentiful as Coco Cay either. There's salads and hot dogs and hamburgers. If you know what to expect, you won't be disappointed. With all that said, I love Labadee, maybe even more than Coco Cay. It was so relaxing and had much more of an island vibe, despite the fact that it's not an island and it's a peninsula. The main drawback of Labadee is that it's crowded and there is not a ton of shaded beach chairs, which Coco Cay has plenty of. We were the only ship at port during our stay, and as you can see, it was packed. I can't imagine how packed it would be if there was another ship in port. Ship Notes 
Since our first and previous cruise, Royal Caribbean has made a few changes to your onboard experience. First of note is that your cabin is no longer turned down or cleaned twice a day. While this isn't the end of the world, the twice a day cleanings were a heaven sent for a family with a young tornado staying in the room. There was also big changes to the main dining room menu and new surcharges for anyone having more than one lobster. While we can't speak to the new menu changes since we ate all our dinners at specialty restaurants, we did hear people complaining that they would only serve you one entree at a time, making it more difficult for a spouse to share their lobster with their partner. This is also not the greatest news. The Wi-Fi on Wonder of the Seas is great, however. Plenty of speed to stream stuff on multiple devices, but the upload speed is horrible. My Google Photos wouldn't even back up at night. Wow bands are back, and for $10, you can have an additional way to open up your door or buy a drink at some bars. Not exactly a wow factor. The straws on board are made out of upcycled sea plastic junk and they claim to be biodegradable. I'm not sure how that exactly works. And gone are the paper cruise compasses. I liked reading the paper cruise compass like my morning paper, highlighting things to do that day other than shuffleboard and napping. The digital version is a joke. Multiple days when I would scan the QR code, I would receive yesterday's cruise compass. And it's just a PDF formatted to be printed out and not displayed on a 16 by nine screen. Very far from an ideal experience. Wonder of the Seas is a fantastic and elegant ship. After being on Oasis, the oldest Oasis ship, we wanted to try the newest and we were not disappointed. I could nitpick about the small layout or design changes, but as parents of a small child who is looking to keep your child entertained, I have to say Wonder of the Seas was a big step up from our last cruise. But that said, at four grand, it definitely wasn't the value that we had on our Oasis cruise, which was 2,500 bucks, but that was when things were just reopening up. All in all, we loved it. And when's the next time you're gonna be able to say that you were in Haiti? Seriously though, we felt like it was still a good value for a family vacation, and we promptly booked another cruise on Icon of the Seas next year. This channel, Stuffy Boardroom, is mandating that I ask you to smash that like button and set fire to this video on the socials. If enough people subscribe, I will make a dedicated Oasis vs. Wonder of the Seas video. Which ship wins? You may be surprised. Who knows if and when that video will ever be made, so hit that notification bell. But seriously, thank you for watching this. I hope you got something out of it, and please do all that stuff I just said.